Perhaps you're here because you've heard of my new ability. Yes, the rumors are true. When I am pushed to my absolute limit, I can tap into the mystical power of the Gout Force, Force. which allows me to strengthen my resolve with the might of gout. gout. It's honestly worse than losing, so I won't be doing it. If you came to see a display of yummy gout, gout. you will be sorely disappointed. But if you came to see pre-game discharge a video game news show completely unrelated to gout, gout then you're in luck because that is this and i'm lyle wrath let's get into it playstation did a state of the playstation presentation i'm looking right at you i'll get you i'll get you i will that i think is the kickoff to this year's e3 but not e3 now because i like to let you eat dessert first there was a big lumpy chunk of spitterman 2 at the end the immediate twist reveal is that peter parker is wearing the suit now and is being really evil with it he's mine you sure he's got big teeth so do i both Peter and Miles are playable this time around. You have a wingsuit type deal that lets you glide. They showed a big action set piece and sadly it has been confirmed by Insomniac that it will not have multiplayer. Even though the game's tagline is this game has multiplayer, there are two players playing together in this game simultaneously or something like that. Konami is remaking Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, which is great on paper, but while you Delta males are whooping and hollering and pissing out outcome, I, an Omega male, remain skeptical. I mean, half the appeal of Metal Gear Solid is that it's directed by an absolute lunatic, and said lunatic has left the building. Can the creative weirdness and meticulous attention to borderline pointless detail that frequently leads to games that run over budget and over deadlines be emulated? I, I guess it's not impossible, but just like this guy, I'm not solid yet. I am naked though, cause I'm cooking. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh takes the hassle out of cooking meals by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. There's 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week. So you're sure to find something that fits whatever eccentric gamer lifestyle you live. And if you're not a pro in the kitchen, don't worry. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. Seriously, the last time they sponsored us on the channel, I knew nothing about cooking. And it actually taught me like a good amount. For example, I learned that it's really friggin' easy to make spaghetti sauce from scratch, and that was a whole phase I went through. So if you want to give it a try for yourself, use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGRATHMAY16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases, and then a box of food will arrive like magic. One of the biggest new standout games of the presentation was Phantom Blade Zero. That said, I have no idea how it's supposed to work. Is this gameplay fake? Does it just have really good context animations like a Batman Arkham kind of deal and this two-way kick thing just kind of does itself? Even if a lot of this is scripted, and it probably is, it still does look neat. Immortals of Avium is a fast-paced Doom-type shooter, but you're not in a literal hell, you're in a more figurative hell of this new saying fuck it dragons genre. Is that a motherfucking dragon? Oh, shit. But speaking of dragons you actually want to say fuck at, you give that back, you fucking bastard! Dragon's Dogma 2 finally showed itself to the world. The game looks a lot like a souped-up version of the first one, but there was a big focus on mage gameplay in the trailer. I didn't use magic in the first one. Apparently it sucked, so maybe that's the flex. Still up in the air whether or not this one will have multiplayer, Dragon's Dogma 1 had this thing where you could customize a second character and your friends could summon them, but not not you. And there was a Dragon's Dogma MMO very briefly in Japan that shut down before it ever made it over here, so am I crazy for expecting it? I think Capcom is crazy if they don't do it. Have you ever been playing Splatoon and thought, I wish these characters all looked like they were over 18 and were blasting each other with big foamy water?
gods of clum. Well then, I guess Foam Stars is going to exist for you. You comparatively less sick weirdo. But I guess it's also a Splatoon that's not hamstringed by Nintendo hardware and netcode. So there might be something to this if it's not too Fortnite chic for its own good. They're making a Ghost Runner 2. I actually like Ghost Runner 1 a lot, even if some parts of it were total fucking bullshit. This one has cool motorcycles. The ghosts have evolved past running and now ride cool fucking motorcycles. Assassin's Creed Mirage finally done showed some gameplay. As expected, it looks very much like a return to the old Assassin's Creed formula, which is kind of like seeing an old friend you had a falling out with years later. Enough time has passed. Fuck it. We're cool. We got to see some Alan Wake 2, but you don't play as Alan Wake 2. You play as this. This lady and she meets Alan Wake too and she says what's your name and he says it's Alan Wake Ooh. There's going to be a Gran Turismo movie where what if gamers who play video games about cars were actually training and are better at it than professional drivers? You'll have to tell me how it looks. I can't see the trailer on screen right now because I don't see race. There were also some PlayStation VR 2 games at the presentation. Resident Evil 4 VR mode was probably the big standout, which is not the same game as the one they put out on the Quest 2 a couple years ago. It's a free DLC to the RE4 remake that lets you play the whole game in VR on PS5. There was also a haha -ha funny zombie game, a Call of Duty looking shooty, and an art direction shooty dealio that I think we've seen this one before. All right, I'm gonna try to move through the rest of these. Final Fantasy 16 and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink both got trailers. Street Fighter 6 showed some of its campaign, which follows the epic story of some dude. Sword of the Sea is a new game from the developers of Journey that looks a lot like Journey, but you skateboard on a sword. A skate sword. Should have called it that. Fucking hire me. Plucky Squire is a game with a very, very nice art direction. Tower of Fantasy looks like Genshin Impact, basically. Although it does have a jetpack, so minor props for that. Ultros is a Metroidvania that looks like skateboard art. Helldivers 2 is borderline plagiarism of Starship Troopers, but that's okay, because the new Starship Troopers game kind of sucks shit. There were also a bunch of games that got no gameplay Tezos. The presentation started with one called called Fair Games with a dollar sign S, which will probably be a payday ripoff or an extraction shooter. They're making a sequel to the Talus Principle. You may not have played that one, but you probably still recognize it because it's been in the banner ads of every single Steam sale for the last eight years. There's a maybe sequel, maybe just same style game to Night in the Woods called Revenant Hill. A dead bird game from the greasy sad people who made Grease called Neva, as in, I'm never gonna play this game. Concord, which is a game about a wiggling cheeseburger, and there was a title card for Five Nuts and Spready, Help Wanted 2. Bungie also teased a new Marathon game, Marathon being the franchise that they worked on even before Halo, so this one's gonna be an extraction shooter. The old one was like old school Doom shit. It's not gonna be the same. It's just not. And Destiny 2 is gonna get an expansion called The Final Shape. The triangle. What the? F it's right there, you blues clues, bitch. They're also releasing some new PlayStation gizmos and gadgets. First up is Project Q, a little handheld tablet that streams your PS5. So it's not a full-blown gaming console thing like a Steam Deck, but probably also won't be super expensive. And uh, PlayStation earbuds. I guess? I assumed Bluetooth headsets and earphones would work on the PS5, do they not? Is this how I find out they don't? Hollow Knight Silk Song has been delayed. How can you delay a game that has no release date? Well, the team behind Hollow Knight is just that good. Apparently the game was planned to release in the first half of this year, but it's not quite gonna make it. I'd say that means it's close, but... You know. As much as I joke around about this game never coming out and its lack of communication, I will say it's done a great job of turning excitement into, I don't know the word, patience. Like my brain has just filed it away as a thing that doesn't exist until it does. And when it does, it better be good. Like it better do that thing to me like Avatar did to those people. I wanna be severely depressed that bugs aren't real. There's a new Mortal Kombat coming out and it's called Mortal Kombat. One, going with the Xbox naming scheme here, are we? Mortal Kombat 1 is a soft reboot of the Mortal Kombat series. I didn't 
play the last one, but I think it had some time travel fuckery. I don't know how deep that spans. Like, do you need to play Mortal Kombat 11 to get what's going on in Mortal Kombat 1? Probably not. Although it does bear the mark of the beast, so maybe. Or maybe they'll just stand around going, hey, Liu Kang, remember the time we was in... Mortal Kombat 11. I don't know what the fuck that turned into. The ROG ally is here and it's not fucking around. Capable of whooping fast 8.6 teraflops. Now, I'll admit, I was super skeptical of a third party Steam Deck competitor, but from early reviews, it looks to be a substantially more powerful little unit that's still somehow relatively affordable. There are two models, a $700 model that's clearly just better, and a $600 model, which isn't as good for almost as much. Much. That's still a little more expensive than a PlayStation or Xbox, but keep in mind Sony and Microsoft can lose money on those because they get a cut every time you buy a game on their console. The fact that they're this cheap means either A, Asus is expecting to sell a lot of these and the margin is tiny, or B, inflation really hasn't hit the electronics market as hard as they've been telling you, and AMD and Nvidia have just been using it as an excuse to gouge you on GPUs. In either case, it's cool to see some competition enter the market especially one that keeps the price low-ish. Like five or six years ago, you could build a whole high-end PC for less than what a fucking graphics card costs now. Armored Core 6 got a good and proper trailer showing a bit of big crunchy robot combat. How much menu finicking it takes to get you there, or if you have to hold your controller backwards to do it, at this point is yet to be seen. But what we have seen looks fucking badass. See? I can get through one of these without calling Robot Dark Souls basically Sekiro with guns. Speaking of Bloodborne likes, do you remember Hawken? I remember Hawken. I played Hawken like once and I was like, hey, Hawken's actually really fun. I'm gonna get into Hawken. And then I never got into Hawken. And then Hawken was gone. But now Hawken is back as a free-to-play PvE game with mostly negative reviews on Steam. So it looks like I'm still not getting into Hawken. Oh well. If you haven't heard of Class of 09 The Re-Up, I'm in it. I've also been helping with production on it. And you're probably looking at these visuals and asking yourself, what the fuck, you're publishing an anime visual novel and kinda? But also... You jacked off to Jack and Daxter? No, I didn't do it to Jack and Daxter. I did it while playing Jack and Daxter. <laughs> Not really. If you have heard of Class of 09, great! This one's got about triple the content of the first game. You can play that first if you want. You don't have to to get what's going on in this one. It's coming out on June 2nd, and you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Overwatch 2, the game that had no real reason existing in the first place, just lost the... Trust me, bro, justification for why it was even made. That's right, the Overwatch 2 campaign has officially been shittily whittily fuck can. And do you know whose fault this is? Why, yours, of course. You didn't buy enough season passes or ovary bucks, so these poor, starving, multi billion dollar publishers couldn't finish the game they're already selling you shit in. And you know what? I'm fucking proud of you. If you haven't learned this lesson yet, we'll finish it later can just as easily be maybe we'll finish it if you're all good little purchasers. You shouldn't trust any of these live service games, especially when it comes to spending money until the game is actually, you know, there. As for Overwatch, I'm sure everyone's favorite casual game from 2016 will continue flailing around chasing the esports dragon and missing the point of why anyone gave a fuck about it in the first place. But some of the plans and campaign content they've already made will be milled by the live service shit wheel, probably into some kind of seasonal event or something. Final Fantasy 16 has been banned in Saudi Arabia, apparently because it features a quote unquote explicit gay sex scene. Now, no spoilers, but if you wanted to be told that the Final Fantasy was to explode a ropey load down another dude's throat, you should have just asked 14 year old me what the series was about. To Square's credit though, they're sticking to their vision and they're not backing down, so good on you, Square. I'll tell you what, you can mint an NFT of Clive Rosefield wiping cum out of his beard or something as a treat. We'll all agree it's tasteful, even if that taste is salty pennies and chlorine. Anyway, here are the gay releases for the month.
I'm Lyle Rat, and this has been Pre-Game Discharge. Come back Come. next month. It's gonna be a big one. There's no E3 this year, but there are still a shit ton of game conferences in June, so I'm sure we'll have a lot to cover. Also, did you know I'm in a heavy metal band called Petrified Giant? We just put out a three-song EP, so I'll throw the playlist right here if you want to spin that shit. Check you on the flop side, bromigos.